And I wa want to welcome our man, Mr. Peter Bruno, to uh, TFNN. Uh, Peter is going to be doing the uh, two to three hour at TFNN. Uh, Peter and myself were on the uh, same station over in West Palm Beach for about uh, 20 years. Peter Bruno, welcome to TFNN. How are yes, you doing? Thank you very much, Tom. Thanks for uh, having me. Oh. And uh, I'm very excited about doing the program uh, come Monday uh, between 2 and 3. I, and I, uh, uh, it's, 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 I don't know if I'm going to be sleeping this weekend. <laughs> well, you, you are too funny. Say, so, hey, let, let, me, let me ask you something. I, I know, you know, folks, see, you know, the, it's, it's really intriguing what has happened in radio in general, okay? So Peter and I have been doing radio for a long period of time. And there used to be a, lot, be a lot of business stations. And now there's no business stations. It's pretty amazing. Right. And the business station that we were on in West Palm was one of the best ones in the country. You know, so isn't it intriguing, Peter, how the whole deal just came down? I mean, and then, you know, I mean, you know, drive time in your car was, it was a great deal. But guess what? You know, as soon as the streaming kept getting bigger and bigger, it's a whole different world, you know? It's totally amazing. And those stations are no longer in existence. Right. So, uh, None of them are. I know. Yeah. So tell us, you know, uh, what do you, you know, the, the name of your show is the Wall Street Money Hour. And what are you going to be talking about? Okay, well, let me I'm just preface this by saying that uh, viewers to this uh, Wall Street Money Hour will be seeing something that is different from anything else that they've ever seen in uh, financial broadcasting or, or uh, analysis. Okay, something I created some 50 years ago. Yeah. And Tom, the way it was created, and sometimes a simple, a simple idea uh, becomes a giant of an idea. Uh, when I was out in New York in a, as a teenager, there used to be a weatherman, a meteorologist on uh, NBC. Uh, this, this guy was unique because he had a handlebar mustache. Okay. And he would say at nighttime, tomorrow's going to be a sunny day, 90 degree temperature. And I would be there with my towel, ready to go to the beach, and I open the front door, and it would be thunderstorms. Oh, my God. I said, I how can these people be so wrong? You know? Yeah. And so I said to myself, you know, if I was able to take the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the history of 100 years, and put it into a, a cyclic format, I would be able to do the same thing these meteorologists do by identifying directional movement of the stock market the way these meteorologists look at charts and look at uh, uh, hot fronts and cold fronts and rain and so on and so forth. Sure. And of course, throughout the years with technology, uh, we've gotten better and better and better. You know, I'm, I'm in a car with my wife and she's looking at her iPhone and she says, you know, we better get home because it's going to rain in 10 minutes. Right. Okay. And no sooner do we, <laughs> do we get home. The thunderstorm is starts raining. It, that that so, you know that there's no doubt that it, what Peter just said there that I love that aspect of it because even you know when we're out boating it's really dangerous when the squall comes up so you you, you, can, you know the weather is ten well a hundred times better than it used to be there's no doubt about that yeah and these meteorologists improved it so much yeah. that they were able to tell you in ten minutes what's going to happen well throughout the years with technology I've been able to identify these chart patterns of, I call it cycle analysis, yes. where I was able to identify the directional movement of the stock market and anything that trades, basically, of whether it's going to be in an up, up channel or it's going to be in a down channel yes. or direction up or direction down. And what I've, I've been able to do is create these cycles to time them from a long-term cycle, which are yearly cycles, to the very, very short term trading cycles that you can scout the market or trade during the day and so on. So, yeah, you know, ideally the first thing that you have to look at if you're looking at a, an indice or, or a stock is determine whether the, the, the stock is in a long term up cycle or a long term down cycle. Now, even if a stock is in a long term up cycle, it doesn't mean it's not going to correct uh, to go down, sure. even though it's within a long-term up cycle. And the same thing with a stock or an indice in a long-term down cycle, 
doesn't mean it can't rally. So the way I try to explain it is in a long-term cycle, we go three steps up and two steps down, three steps up, two steps down nice. in a long-term cycle. Yeah. Uh, so you just have to wait, watch out for the, for the two steps down. Yes. But in a down cycle, it's three steps down and then two steps up and then three steps down. So right now, I believe the overall investment markets are in a down cycle. Yeah. And what we saw this morning was a was a rally within a down cycle. So it was a step up within an overall down cycle for uh, you know the major investment markets. Yes. That's how that's how we do it. And on a radio and, and, and TV program, we'll be uh, handling questions by your, your viewers, and we'll be telling them exactly what the long term cycle is telling us, what the short term cycle is telling us and how to trade whatever they're interested in trading uh, to be able to be on the right side of the market and make money. Sure. And Peter, how did you end up getting into the radio business in general, the financial radio business? Well, the, 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 I, 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 I was listening to a radio program. I had a training, I had a, I was training director of a brokerage firm, yeah. a low Brosen company, probably no one ever heard of it, but they became Smith Barney, and taken over by Lehman and so on. Right. And uh, uh, listening to the radio program, people would ask this financial talk show host, uh, what is it about the stock market? Every every time I buy a stock, the stock goes down. Right. Every time I sell a stock, the stock goes up. Yeah. Uh, is the market being manipulated? And the radio host told them to read the Wall Street Journal or, or some textbook. And I said, you know, I have this training school and if I would be able to offer uh, investment seminars to the general public and yes. tell them how the markets work, how to place orders, how to do anything, I would do an eight-hour seminar on uh, on Saturdays. Wow! And that uh, and they were very very successful uh, for that. And because of that success of the seminars that I was doing, uh, we decided to write an investment newsletter. Uh, the Wall Street Money Letter, which is yes. the Wall Street Money Letter that we, we have on TFNN. Yes. And uh, and uh, uh, and back then there was no internet, Tom. Right. So therefore, you know, we would send out the newsletter, take one day to write it, another day to print it, another yeah. day to send it out. People would say, Peter, by the time I got your newsletter, the stock is up two points. What do I do? Do I buy it or do I wait for for it to come come back down? And I said, can't you just buy it for me? When you uh, when you get the buy signal, so because at that point, if you were a newsletter publisher, you had to be licensed with the SEC. We easily converted ourselves to an investment advisory firm. So therefore, you know we would we would be able to buy and sell for the clients uh, based on the management fee. Hey, just, Pete, Peter, just stay with us one second. We get a quick sure. break. And we're going to bring you right back. Okay, uh, great. Thanks. Peter Bruno, Tom O'Brien, we appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 181. NASDAQ is up by 17. S&Ps are down 14. Peter and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Peter, Bruno, Peter Bruno, Tom O'Brien. Uh, we appreciate your growl and prowling with us out here. Peter, folks, is going to be uh, starting with us this Monday, okay? Uh, 2 to 3 Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be the Wall Street Money Hour with our man, Mr. Peter Bruno. We're just uh, talking with Peter right now. And yeah, Peter, you know, it's pretty amazing how I, I remember that specifically. You know, if you were, actually were a newsletter writer, uh, you know, the SEC thought you had to be registered and, until you didn't have to be when someone challenged it, I guess. Must have been a long time ago. Must have been like 1980 or something. Who knows? But, That's right, 19, 1981, exactly. Is that what it was? Okay, right. Question why radio and it comes to a point where if you're providing uh, uh, forecast and an analysis in the market for uh, by way of a newsletter yes uh, people and you're advertising the newsletter people want to know uh, you know what what the real deal is right though I never had any aspirations to become a, a radio host I felt that I had to be on the air in order to let people understand what I was doing, what I created, and how well they can make money uh, following my advice. So that's how, why I started to do a radio program. I love it. 
And as you know, yeah. Peter, you know, so folks, the way that the radio worked, right, it was just always pay to play, which some people realized and some other people didn't. It was always expensive to be on the radio. So, Peter, how I got on, right, it was the same thing. I had a, I had a guy come into my office, right, and turn around and try to sell me a commercial, right, on one of the stations in Boston. Yeah. And I said, well, listen, you know, uh, so the cost of a, you know, commercial, then I says, well, you know, I hear these guys on the radio, what's the cost for the whole hour? And folks, the, the cost for the commercial was like, at that point, I think it was like $30 a commercial. Now we're going back that far and the cost for the whole hour was only like $100. I says, hold it, man, wow. that, does, that doesn't even make any sense. I, we had Peter wow. saying, wow, because we were paying five and $600 an hour when we finished, <laughs> exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. And so it's amazing, isn't it, how that whole thing, you know, shook down. I mean, there's, there's no doubt, you know, so. Of course, the key point also is that uh, if they were paying you to do the radio program, you would have to have advertisers. Right. And you're putting your, your, your reputation behind advertising some company or some service that you may not believe in. And your radio listeners are believing that. You're endorsing them, yeah. and therefore they can get in trouble. You know, Tom, I have a question. You, I told you how a little idea of psychoanalysis and yes. the meteorologists created this whole uh, industry and, and, and service that I provide. Uh, my question has always been, how did you come up with the idea of CFNN? What happened is that the... The guy came into my office for a, you know, a radio um, ad. I started doing the hour, but I, I felt that I was one of, when, when broadcast.com went public, I was already streaming. And it's so weird, man, that I was actually in their prospectus. And because I thought the whole world was going streaming a lot, you know, before people did. That's amazing. And, sure did. Yeah. and then what happened is that I says, okay, the way to do this is if it's going to be streaming, you know, little by little, I start picking people up and say, well, hey, man, this is a kind of a nice way to go. Do you know what I'm saying? If we can build out a network, you know, and each one of them can have their own show. And, you know, we were really lucky in the context of uh, even the pandemic because everyone I had set everyone up. At the beginning, folks, what would, would end up happening, when we were setting studios up, it was a lot more expensive because you needed, as Peter and I both know, we needed all these boxes and all this equipment. You know, you know, we had a radio station up in Nashua, and the radio station, this was so sick, folks. Tom was running the radio station up in Nashua. And the radio station up in Nashua, so picture this. One of the rooms was almost as big as half of my, half of one of the offices we have right now. And now, just so you can understand that, so, so let's, let's picture that just the equipment in there was like 400 square feet, and now that 400 square feet is down to like one little box. I mean, wow. that, that's wow. how dramatic it got. So it, it was just step by step, and then I, I says, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool how this can work out. So that's how it was. And all of these hosts, which is really wild, I didn't know any of them before the fact. Jeez. And, you know, I, I just meet some people, and I thought they really, you know, you know, we know no one has a crystal ball, and all I wanted people to do is to do their best, and that, that's kind of, you know, how this whole thing came down, do you know what I mean? So, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. And we appreciate you coming this idea on. idea is like a, uh, like a Steve Jobs idea. Yeah, I mean, well, you created something that is so unique and so unusual uh, that there's nothing like it, and it's, it's tremendous for the uh, listeners and the viewers. Yeah, and we have a huge amount of tigers and tigresses, and they help each other, you know. And folks, if you've never been in the tiger's den, it's only a dollar. Go in the tiger's den because you have people, you know, tigers and tigresses helping each other every day. And that's almost like that. That's a live like 14 hours a day. And it's a dollar. The only reason we charge a dollar is that what ends up happening is that we, you know, can't have someone, you know, in there that scamming or bots or anything like this. Okay, um, so it's it's a it's a great family, and we know it's happened over the years. Of course, um, you know, first what happened, which is great, you know, because I miss the aspect of drive radio. Folks was huge. I mean, you know, yes. there's no doubt about that. When you have people trapped in traffic, man, it was huge. You know, it's yes. it's it's harder to get 
clients now than it was then. I can tell you that. That's di different ball games. You know what I mean? And sometimes I, 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 you know, Jacob helps us beyond belief, and I say to him, I can't believe. You know, we look at other sites, and they claim this is what ends up happening, folks. They claim they have so many listeners, but we know they don't because we know the bots are like, and there's a huge scandal going on right now with Nielsen, actually, with, and that's what you're seeing with uh, this podcasting deal um, about the amount. People can say that they get millions when they might have 1,500 people. I mean, it, it, so there's, there's a heat, anyway, that, that's a whole other story, but it does affect us, you know, on a continual basis, so. Well, well, listen, Peter, you know, we really appreciate you uh, giving um, us, uh, you know, your time because, folks, this is always a huge commitment, man. When you're in the same place every day, you know, it's not easy. It's not. It, we love it. We all love it. I'm not saying that. But guess what? Peter and I know, you know, being in the same place every single day, you can't be late. There's no such thing as being late. Right, Peter? <laughs> That's right. right. You know, I used to tell people in my training class that, starting exactly at 9.30, that at 9.30, the New York Stock Exchange bell rings. Yes. Whether you're there or not. Right. Okay. Right. And, uh, but I, I have to tell you, Tom, that your radio listeners and viewers to uh, TFNN are going to uh, really learn an awful lot and really have something that is uniquely different from anything they've ever experienced anywhere because... In the, in the 50 years I've been doing this, going to bookstores or listening to other people, no, no one has anything like what I created over the years. And I think we're going to make a lot of money for a lot of people. Well, that's a beautiful thing. Well, listen, Peter, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look for, you know, the inaugural program of uh, your man, uh, Peter Bruno. Uh, the Wall Street Money Hour. Thanks, Peter. Thank you so much, Tom. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You too. Okay, Bye. folks, stay right there. We'll come right back.